Okay. Right. So we'll we'll pray and then we'll get started. Yeah. Okay. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time. We thank you that, um, Lord, for all that you've done for each one of us, God. And that's worthy of uh, declaring. That's worthy of praising, God. That's worthy of, uh, Lord, reaching out to our neighbors and friends, God. The wonderful things that you've done in us, then you continue to do in us, Lord. And Lord, I just pray today that, um, Master, that you would, um, you would just um, unravel some things, Lord, in us, Father God. I pray that you would open up certain things in us, Father God, to, to receive more of you, to understand more of you, and also to, Lord, to, uh, to make sure that, Lord, that what we are declaring, Father God, what you've called us to declare, the virtues, the characteristics of how wonderful you are, that we will do it well, Lord, not just through the words, not just through the songs, but through our lives, Father God. May our lives speak louder, clearer, and uh, but sharper than anything else, Father God. We thank you. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last class we, we looked at, uh, I think we stopped with some of the basics of communication, right? So we were looking at, um, and the reason we were looking at communication is because, uh, well, um, preaching, it's proclaiming, and it's uh, communicating the gospel, right? So we looked at um, some of the things that we need to actually share and declare, and um, the gospel being the message, and uh, and... So in, in the basics of communication, we looked at communication being um, you know, something that's, uh, that's two-way. It's not just speaking, but it's also speaking and listening. It's not just hearing, but it's listening, which means you make some effort to understand what is being spoken, what is being said. Right? And uh, we looked at several barriers. There could be several barriers to communication. Okay, So first one we saw was the language itself okay if someone doesn't understand our language that becomes a big barrier right and sometimes it is the maybe they understand the language but the language the way in which i use the language it's it's not good like it's poor language meaning it's not uh, not explaining things or i'm repeating things or i'm not um, being clear there's no clarity and all that so poor language right so poor language could also mean that um, you know that i i speak at um, you know i use words that are difficult you know difficult for the hearer to understand right i use words and use phrases and maybe use uh, certain terminology uh, which the other person the listener does not does not understand it's not familiar Right. So, therefore, whatever idea I'm sharing, using those words, the person does not get it. Right. So, communication is a barrier. Okay. Also, the level of volume. Now, these are some practical things. Right. The level of volume. You know, the the whether we are loud, whether we are soft. You know, if we are if we are going to be speaking too loud and shouting to the point of hurting the other person's hearing. They're going to be comfortable throughout, and they're going to be, you know, they're going to be wincing and just, you know, making sure that their hearing does not get impaired, right? Because maybe they are sitting close to the speaker, or maybe they're, you know, they are uh, wherever, wherever they are sitting, it's too loud for them, so they are not able to focus on what is being said. They're not receiving the content, right? Um, so that becomes a barrier. What if if it's too soft, right? They are straining to hear. These are some things that we that doesn't come to us naturally, you know. But these are some things that we need to take note of. You know, I know of someone who speaks very softly, right? Very, very softly. Maybe for them it seems very loud, but they are speaking very softly. And every time you need to go near, you know, just say again, "What is it? What did you say?" And on top of that, they're also a very shy person, also. And so they, they even when you ask, you know, "What did you say?" They're becoming even more softer in volume, right? So nothing comes out. So if you're going to be speaking softly, again, there's a problem. If you're speaking too loud, there's which means there needs to be an optimal level of 
comfortable level of loudness so people can listen here right okay there are some hindrances like noise we hear the road okay we hear the squirrels <laughs> they're making a lot of noise there in the tree right so those are squirrels by the way right so we 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 get to hear all these all these sounds right all these noises and then some of sometimes our focus goes into that you know maybe there's someone you know not too long there was i think the not too long ago there was uh, some function happening there they were blasting you know i think in the last semester they are having the pa there and they are last blasting and you can feel the that subwoofer you know going <laughs> you know some music is playing really loud and so our focus gets distracted diverted by this in the environment okay so that also matters so it's good when you are addressing someone just make sure that you know the environment is conducive to learning or conducive to listening etc okay lack of light well poor preparation poor preparation by the speaker leads to poor delivery of the speaker right so they are second guessing you know is it okay am i saying they're not very sure so that also lack of proper arrangement of the material etc so sometimes you know it it helps like for example i still remember the message the sermon that the pastor spoke at my wedding okay i still remember how many of you remember what we shared last two sundays ago And those of you who are at apc you will probably know okay you can calculate okay this sunday was acts chapter 24 to 26 so the last chapter must must have been 21 to 23 before that you know but the thing is uh, you know if the material is arranged normally we would it's conducive to listen and hear I, and i remember this um the sermon at the wedding because he talked talked about four c's you know communication concern you know four c's in in marriage and it, it stays with me it stayed with me through these years right so if it's arranged well and if it's shared the people tend to um, you know recall it better right okay then the 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 fifth thing that we see is the human perception okay so we need to understand that right so there are about what 6 and 11 like right? right here and then a few people online as well so the way we perceive the message also is differ also differs right because there are certain aspects of the message which we grab hold of or we it it's emphasized to us which is nothing wrong um but what if the way you perceive the message is completely different from the way it was intended and that happens in normal conversation right um like somebody said uh, it, this happened like uh, in a bible college setting okay i i remember this was the first batch okay so the bible college uh, the, the all the guys had gone for a uh, oh, sorry the the warden of that time who was there at that time had gone for a a uh, prayer meeting or some worship concert okay so he was there and the boys were in the hostel so they wanted to know uh, what to cook or something you know those days they themselves used to cook you know they themselves used to cook and eat and all that so they wanted to know who you know what to make and where to buy whatever some something they wanted to clarify with the warden so um then i received a message the next day you know the warden is being rude okay so so i went and asked okay so the boys were there the warden is there i'm just asking so what happened so then he said no he's speaking very rudely you know he's shouting on the phone then i asked you know what happened so he, he says you know i was in the concert and they were they were they wanted to know something and though I, so i shouted yeah tell me yeah what what do you want i was trying to hear something you know over the volume of what was happening and so i was i was obviously i was being loud because i wanted to hear what he was saying i couldn't hear and and therefore it was so what happened was he was communicating but the way it was perceived communication is perceived is like hey this person is angry this person is rude i was being polite he's not right and more so when you use texting right when you use an email when you use a text suppose you you receive a text you know come home immediately okay now the emotion 
of that text is something that you put in those words right it could be someone smiling and say hey you come home immediately i prepared something you know your favorite snack come home immediately or it could be you know where are you it's time come home immediately the emotion is you're putting the text does not have it right so the way i perceive it the words are the same but i put the emotions there and the way i perceive this is different so people's perceptions are different and especially so when it's a different culture that right? we will talk about that posture and all that but you know i remember speaking to a in a different congregation and there the culture was that now i didn't know about this the culture was that if you okay this is what happened you know i was i was speaking i was preaching and everybody is turning their face away suppose i look at vimal and i'm saying you know god loves you vimal is just turning away he's putting his face down he's turning away i'm looking at diksha and saying you know god wants to deliver you diksha and diksha is just turning i'm wondering what is happening you know why are people turning their face away they're not receiving it is something wrong with my preaching right there's something then i um then it was okay this was over i just went i god you know what is wrong with me did i did i make some mistake what is it then i realized in that culture of that particular you know community yeah sorry it's a sign of respect if you look at you know somebody's eyes it's like you're challenging their respect you're challenging challenging that person so it's a sign of respect to lower your lower your face lower your eyes and saying you know i respect you you're an elder i'm respecting you so i didn't know that and i was like they're not receiving my receiving what i'm sharing maybe i'm something wrong with the way i'm saying the way the language that i'm using it's not being received so the way it is perceived so here also i was sharing but they were communicating something through their gesture it was not verbal non verbal and i was perceiving it wrong right so communication communication the way it is perceived by different people it also matters we need to understand that okay um so abhishek says that's why we have emojis yes we need to for texting we need to use emojis otherwise it's uh, it's uh, especially if it's a serious message serious sounding message emojis help us right okay so the message received need not be the same as the message sent okay so that's the thing so when it comes to effective point number 6 right effective communicators they always they are mindful what is the response of the person okay how are people responding to this and they can actually change they can either pause uh maybe change the way they are speaking maybe they can you know maybe ask questions based on the responses right so that's how it is right based on the response uh we can actually be even more effective right in our communication we can change we can change maybe we're going too slow we can actually be a bit fast maybe we are going fast we can actually slow down all that happens right so so we're looking at basics of communication okay and also the next thing is if you know people you know about people's life orientations then we can be a little more accurate it will help us life orientation meaning you know it could be their background educated uneducated uh what culture they come from what is the age group right um and then you know what the season of life they are in are they single married you know are they parents are they grandparents right so then what you use or whatever you're sharing maybe life examples and all that will be relevant to them right for example if you go and uh, you know you you're speaking to a group of people and they are let's say you know they are they have a heart for god but they are not you know they they don't use technology okay they don't use technology and for such a gathering if you if you're talking about artificial intelligence and you're talking about internet you're talking about you know uh, google searches and all that you know it's not making sense for them right you're talking about how effectively one can share the gospel but all the examples that you're using are tech related you know this is how you can but then for them they are totally away cut away from technology for example right so we need to understand okay this is the life orientation of this audience that i'm addressing right or this is the age group this is how 
you know this is what they are so uh, and one of the most difficult things is when you're speaking to you know children right at least for me you know you need to be direct you need to be clear and you need to get their attention because they are so very easily distracted right and i remember you know once speaking to a group of uh, sunday school you know, children church and that was the first and last time i spoke <laughs> after that i said i i'm not this is not for me okay so like my wife used to teach you know this small gathering so four or five kids they used to teach and then she used to teach and he said you know these these this these children are very naughty i said how can, you know it's it's easy now, how can you say you know they, it's very difficult to get their attention i said no it's very easy so he said okay one sunday you come so those days i i used to you know handle the sound and all that so i did okay after worship i'll come okay so i went there and i then said okay come everyone let's sing so i started singing and then one boy said it's boring <laughs> okay so then then i called him okay you come you do the actions come stand next to me so i thought okay i'll sort it by then so he stood next to me and then he's he's you know he's doing the actions and all that then as they were singing one boy you know in the congregation is his brother this boy's brother he opens the snack box okay and he takes one chips potato chips and he's eating he's he's crunching he's making a lot noise he's saying he's he's eating snacks even i want i want you know that's all so again pause okay i said if you are going to eat now i'm going to send you back to your mother okay close the snack box okay closed then i said okay uh we finished somehow finished the song i said okay let's pray the minute i said let's pray close our eyes you no know, these two boys took off you know, they started you know, they ran we were actually in a terrace and uh, they ran one boy ran in this direction one boy ran in that other direction and we ran after them because they didn't want anything you know they, it was in a terrace so we went and held them so literally laid hands on them and prayed okay holding them so that they don't run and with that ended the class i said okay that's it <laughs> i'm going so you know we need to know who our audience is we need to know how to keep their attention right so obviously i didn't have the skills right so i thought okay if i can communicate to adults i can communicate to children i can communicate no it requires some thought it requires some ability in order to do that right so um so that's the thing life orientations really help us like right? are they young are they old whatever okay so another thing to in to important thing about communication is that there are certain things that you do verbally when you communicate right words you're using words but also you're not using words when you communicate so what do you mean by that these are non verbal these are gestures right these are maybe the nodding of your head the expression of your eyes okay um your hand you move your hand right your hands and maybe you move around when you talk you know sometimes subconsciously we do something right we maybe we scratch our heads or we are you know we, we are subconsciously we're not thinking actually we're saying something but we are you know we are doing this with our button right or or we just straightening our shirt all the time okay we are just conscious of it we, we don't think about it we just do it right so all these are non verbal things you are communicating something and that non verbal thing can be a distraction so we are talking about communicating well right without any distractions without any um, so that it, whatever you are saying goes in the same manner and then it reaches them well right so some of our non verbal things can be a distraction right and even some verbal things can be a distraction for example like i used to use a lot of words like you know you know you know right repeat you know this is what it is you know you know and then i realized that it was a it was a distraction for the hearer right so i had to cut down those you knows and all that so things like this right so these are basic things but these are important things and you realize that when we make these small changes it actually helps us communicate better okay okay so um communication also evokes 
cognitive and affective meanings in others. So what does that mean? That means that uh, when we communicate, it also, there is a response, right? There's a rational response. There is also an emotional response based on what you communicate, right? And we need to be mindful of that because we cannot manipulate people. What does manipulate mean? Sorry? Yeah, you do say, you say something, you do something in order to control the other person, right? We cannot manipulate the emotions of people. You know, suppose you stay, say a very sad story with the intent of the other person feeling sad and with that, you know, you want something done, okay. right? Sometimes we, even as ministers of God, we fall into that trap, right? So sometimes we do that and then we lead to an altar call, right? It's an emotional response. It is not a spiritual response, right? It's not a... So, yes, there are emotions when it comes to decisions, but it cannot be a manipulative thing, right? We need to be mindful of that. So... Um, so we need to, but we also need to understand that yes, communication, good communication, uh, evokes certain response. So you can inspire people, motivate people, you know, based on what we are communicating, the content with which we are communicating. Okay. So these are some things that we need to take note of when it comes to communication. Okay, because when we are saying we are proclaiming the gospel, we are preaching, uh, it involves communication. It involves good communication, right? Um, sometimes I'm sure you, you've heard certain messages and you, you just understand, you just know it word for word. You, you're able to remember it word for word. Why? Because it was communicated well. And it was simple, it was, it was said in such a way that some certain tools of communication, like maybe that person said four things, you know, A, B, C, D, right? Adoration and, you know, whatever, you know, each word, each letter meant a word and then you were able to this recall that right okay now we are looking at language itself okay we looked at communication we look at language itself language itself when we communicate use the language it can be you know it can result in these four things or it can used for these four or five things right one first thing is you get information you get a report right through using language you can report information you can receive information right so it can be, language can be informative. The message that you convey can be informative. What is information? News, right? Something that you're informing person that, hey, this happened, and this happened recently, this happened, you know, so many years ago. Information, people, places, dates, timelines, information. So language can be used to convey information, right? Secondly, language can be used to get information, like you interrogate someone. Interrogate, interrogate means to, you know, you ask questions, you investigate, you're asking, you know, questions and um, uh, getting some answers. So it can be used as interrogation. Language can be used to give orders, right? What is an order? It's a directive. It's a command, right? So, so that's a different use of a language. It's different, different from, right, giving information. You're actually giving an order. You're saying, okay, do this. Right? So you use language to do that. Right? Language can also be expressive where you're giving vent to your feelings. Right? Venting feelings meaning, you know, this is how you're feeling happy and you're expressing that through the language. You're feeling sad, you're expressing that through the language. Right? Through the words that we choose. You're feeling frustrated or angry. Again, you use language to express that, right? Uh, evocative means you're creating emotions in the other person. You say something to make them laugh and it's creating certain emotions, right? They are they are feeling happy about it. Or you give something, you say something which is serious, right? It's based on the content of what you're sharing and that evokes an emotion. So all this, these are the possibilities of the language that you use, right? So when we use the language you can use it for all this as long as you know i just want to say that as long as it is used in the right way right it's not meant to manipulate it's used in the right way it's used to communicate what you want to communicate which is the truth right you want to share that
So communication is sharing, and we use language in all these ways. OK. Um, OK, any questions? OK, so I, I I just want to want you to let maybe let's just do a small exercise. I want you to communicate. OK, so this is a preaching class, right? So you communicate. You want, I want you to say something um, about yourself. OK, and um, yeah, and you do it in, I don't know, different ways. Um, so you can. I don't know. Um, online students, it might be a little difficult, but then you can you can also do this. Okay, so I just want maybe this row, this row, this row. You know, some volunteer, one volunteer. Okay, somebody, okay, you you share about yourself. You can talk on anything. You just share about it. Okay, talk about it. Maybe take a minute to share. Take a minute to think about it. So anyone from here? Okay, the one who says no will have to. If you're saying no, so Diksha is here, and then here, anyone? Okay. Yeah. Vimal? Oh, Komal. Okay. Right. And here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Do we have another mic? No, right? We don't have. Okay. So you can. Uh, no problem. You can. You have. Okay. 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 So yeah. So Diksha, you can talk about anything. You can talk about yourself. You can talk about the weather. But um, yeah. So let's just hear. You know, we're not. There's no. There's no evaluation, right? So we just want to get you to speak and get you to share. So it can be anything. Anything under the sun. Maybe this morning devotion you shared something. That's also fun. But just take a minute. Okay, so your time would start one second. Let me just start the timer. So it's just a minute. Okay. So within a minute, you share something. Um something meaningful. One second. Okay. Okay, your time starts now. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. In our girls' hostel, we are doing morning devotion. So while we were doing devotion, we are reading uh, the Galatians chapter, Galatians epistles. So the last chapter we were studying today. So in that, uh, the, like while, while we were reading, I was reading a verse. It was like, bear with one another. Like Paul was telling, bear with one another. So like God spoke to me. It's not just about us. Well, while we are in group, while we are in a, any place like community and all, we should think about everyone, not only about ourselves. OK, wonderful. You spoke, you did that in 18 seconds. Oh, no, sorry, uh, 18 seconds to you know, balance 18 seconds with it. So you did about uh, yeah, 38, 32 seconds, uh, 42 seconds. Yeah. OK, Komal. Okay, your time starts now. Go for it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Komal, and uh, I think a little louder. Yeah. My name is Komal, and uh, today we learned about uh, uh, revivals, vegetation, and mobs of God in first lecture, and we uh, learned lot of things from that. That how uh, early time God works in that one that time, and so we believe that. Today also God is able to do, God is able to work at this time also. So we are going, we were going through Acts chapter, Acts 1 and 2. So we learned so many things we studied and we uh, got to know that how, when the uh, revival comes, what is happening, we, we got to know. And what when the visitations comes, what happens, we uh, learned about all these things. Right. Okay. Good. So I, I noticed, you know, you were moving your hands, and you gave three things, very structured kind of thing. And same, Diksha also, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't, I didn't notice you moving hands or anything. But then, yeah, you were moving your head, and you were talking about what you, you know, what you shared in the uh, in the Bible College Hostel, right? Okay, okay. So Asabu is it? Okay. Um, yeah, Asabu, go ahead. Hi everyone, praise the Lord. I am Asabu from APC Bible College, second year. 
I'm not having a proper health, but this today is the challenging day for me to lead worship in morning devotion. My vocals are not good. I having cold. So by God grace, anyway, I lead the worship. So I feel so happy mm. because the Holy Spirit in us, He will help us. He will guide us. He will encourage us all the time. So I feel so happy. And as we started this second year, I'm learning more deeper and deeper about God, revelation, mm. revival, everything. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. So, um, you know, we saw that. Okay, anyone wants to try online? Just a simple one minute. Okay, go ahead, Gertrude. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Gertrude. I just want to give a testimony. I went for a healing service on uh, Friday. And it was so wonderful that God, He selected me first in the group and He healed me of my sciatica problem and my skin uh, infection. And He gave me so many details in the prophecy that I was shocked. Only God would be able to know so many details about you. And not even the doctor could diagnose, but God healed me. And I give all the glory and praise to our Lord. Okay. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so each one of us um, shared, each one of us, uh, you know, you communicated something, right? So in your communication, there are certain aspects, you know, whatever we saw, the voice, the loudness of it, the softness of it, right? The rate at which you speak, speak, you know, sometimes it can be very, very fast. You know, this is what I did, this is what I did. And then people are like, you know, and then, but if you can, you know, slow down, you can give emphasis to it, the rate at which you speak, okay? And also the kind of words that you choose, you know, all that is in your control, okay? Sometimes you're forced to communicate, like what happened to Diksha, right? He's, he's like, okay, I don't want to, but then I have to, so, you know, I'll do it and so kind of things, you know? So, so at, at such moments, the what you say will be a little different, right? Rather than, you know, hey, I want to say this, you know, suppose Diksha wants to, you know, say something, she's saying like, I want to get their attention, you know, I want to have this question, I want to ask you this, I have this clarity. The way she says will be different from you know the way she would spoke speak uh, otherwise you know so things like that so so we know all these factors actually bear upon how we communicate like sometimes and and you know sometimes like it's like okay I, I don't want to say this but then I have to say it and so the way it comes out is very different right so so all this we can be mindful of when we actually communicate. Yeah, sure. When we actually preach or actually when we speak. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes when I'm standing on the pulpit or uh, it could be a classroom, it could be anything. Sometimes when there are signs of a little bit of distraction or, you know, people feeling a little, uh, 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 you know, restless. Uh, restless, it could be because of the way I speak, it could be. Uh, their mindset, it could be a situational thing. Yeah. So as a pastor, as a speaker, how is it that you try to address or you refrain from looking there and then just moving on with the flow? Yeah. So that, see, this is a reality. This is what happens and it's bound to happen. Um, whichever, you know, whichever group of people we are addressing. So there could be some distractions happening. Like, for example, there's a child which is crying. You know, the child is crying and then Despite all that the parent is doing to calm the child, the child is crying louder and louder. And obviously, you know, it's affecting everything. So at such moments, you just intervene. And just say, okay, you know, I think the child is having a problem. Maybe you'd like to you know, take the child outside and, you know, pacify and and then she'll be fine. So please do, can you, maybe the child parents can do that. And so, so those, you know, you, then you can move on, you know, but sometimes you, 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 yeah, sometimes you're just uh, pouring your heart out and, and then maybe the person in the first row is sleeping. You know, it's like, but the thing is, you know, maybe they have a reason. You know, maybe they they've taken some medication. They could not sleep 
the n number of reasons you know maybe they are in a night shift and they somehow they said i want to come to church and they're sitting in the first row and then they are like you know so so those things it's better that you just take it in your stride ignore it and keep going right it's better don't it's fine uh, don't get bothered by it. in fact you need to just tell yourself okay I, i'm going to go for it even though i might see this things happening i'm just i'm just going to go for it so so there are some things that you you need to because it is affecting people like on the on the other hand like sometimes you know like this person was i noticed this person was really like this you know and the people who were noticing they started laughing like they are first, first row this person is also sitting this way first row and they are like looking at and then they are you know look at him and then they are laughing and all that so thankfully the person who was next to him just woke him up because he realized that hey, the others are you know uh, laughing and then so he kind of uh, woke him up so the thing is if there you intervene your calling unnecessary attention to that person and it becomes a uh, maybe you're sharing something serious and it becomes it waters it down right so there are times when you just avoid it keep going and even though for you it could be a distraction like for example once we were leading worship and the um, i don't know this person this lady who, who she walked in like this into the church she felt it was too loud so she, so you, you can imagine you just i'm just there leading worship and then that person walked in and what will you do you know your response is hey what do i do because the whole time she's she is standing there hands on her ears okay and it wasn't like it was too loud or anything it was comfortable because there were other senior people but for her it was loud this thing don't even look there <laughs> right you need to continue you can't do anything right and you just need to continue go for it and don't let it affect you and the message uh certain other times are like um you know when it becomes uh, people are restless because it's um, it's lunch time right and that happens in class also <laughs> right? so those are things so which means it's a, it's a cue for you you know sometimes hey, we can pick it up later it's not it's not like we can actually we i need to finish this we can pick it up next sunday or we can pick it up next session so it's fine people are tired people are this thing let's just wind up you know maybe it's towards the end of the session so you you take a call based on that yeah because once i remember there was a small setting and a gathering and i was like you know full josh prepared for a small very small uh, topic and uh, even before i started Uh, it was a direct implication of the watch and the time oh okay. so then the mindset is like you know uh, uh, it was really like uh, mm. in a confused state and then though i finished i knew it was not so efficient that had that gesture not been maybe the efficiency would have been much better oh i see okay but then uh, so whoever the host was they said uh, not the host be... audience or oh, okay i see okay, okay. so then uh, uh, even before you started yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah so that's uh, those are some things that we maybe need to be mindful of yeah especially yeah especially when it comes to time you know that's a very uh, crucial thing because um, if you are not, if we are not mindful of it then we are conscious of it mindful of it then we tend to towards the end we see like oh there is only 2 minutes or 3 5 minutes left and we tend to rush there are some who who don't care right who don't care about the time god's word has to be preached <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrong thing in the sense is like i'm under the anointing and i have to preach it you know you better listen it doesn't help the people are it had, people have to be recipient to it right that's the purpose of the whole thing being communicated yeah okay um any other thoughts anything um hmm yeah yeah so yeah i know there are some preaching games that we will play so like for example okay i'll i'll introduce it later let it be a surprise <laughs> right okay so and also yeah everyone has to present things so 
present and preach and all that, right? So, yeah. yeah. Vimal, you have a question? Yeah. We are, as a pastor, we have to preach on Sundays on church. And if we are going with some situations, some circumstances, like uh, uh, something happened, so how we can go and preach in those times? Mm. Yeah, we need the grace of God. No, <laughs> suppose you had a fight at home, <laughs> real situation, right? And it happened to me in the sense, uh, you know, Saturday, I'm having this argument with my wife, right? I was saying, and I don't even remember after the argument, I don't remember what I argued. So, yeah, the thing is to get right, get right with God, get right with whoever we fought with. Receive the grace of God and then go. And sometimes you're not feeling, you know, you are in a tough situation, right? Maybe some you received a phone call or someone said something and you're upset about it, right? And how can I preach in the state of mind? Right? Just ask the Lord for grace, right? Yes, it, it is It is important. You know, it, it is difficult. It is a challenge, right? Uh, maybe... You know, you receive a message that somebody passed away, right? And here you are, you're just about to go and share. So, like, some of the things that I do is I, I don't check my phone, right? Uh, obviously, you know, I just keep it, put it on, uh, do not disturb kind of a mode once the service starts. So, whatever it is, people will share. They will, whatever, if it's a very important message, then I don't have to be, you know, disturbed by it, you know? Sometimes you look, you know, what if there's an important message, you know, something that they, uh, it, about the church, right? I'm saying about the ministry team, maybe the ushers want to say something. No, I just don't look at it. So that's the thing. Well, it is, it is, it is very possible that there could be a, like a sad, and sad news, some urgent thing, something people share. And, but then you receive the grace of God for that. You say, God, you know, I, I'm sharing, but... You you help me, right? Uh, you help me share. So the thing is this, you know, we we don't put on a pretense in order to share certain things. You know, uh, you be real, you be authentic. You know, you are affected by it. Yes, you are affected by it, and you share despite that. And I think it's it's good to be authentic and sincere, right? Right. You don't have to put on something and be something in front of people which we are not. We don't have to. Just have to be real, authentic, sincere, and and God will take care of the rest. Right? Okay. Um, okay. So Gertrude asking another question. We, we suppose we prepare a sermon and forget the important details and same and say something else. How to manage in this situation? Yeah, that is also possible. Maybe not the entire message, but certain details. You know, maybe we got distracted or we left that out. Um, yeah, there's no way to remedy it unless, of course, uh, may maybe, you know, you're doing a series and you're doing a, you know, you, and at the series of messages and next Sunday also, you know, you get a chance to speak and you get a chance to summarize the previous message or give a brief of the previous message. You can do that. You know, that happens, you know, in time, even because, because of lack of time, you were not able to finish, you know, some of those things that you wanted to say or you prepared to say and then you left it. So that's uh, if in such cases, yes, we can remedy it. But otherwise, I think um, it's fine. It's fine, you know. Um, we make errors. We can we can see how we can not repeat it. Like probably in the notes, we can underline certain things and um, thing. And then and then also, you know, I'd like to add that sometimes, you know, God emphasizes certain things, even as we are speaking. That God, the Holy Spirit, puts a emphasis. There's a there's an emphasis, the prompting. There's a weight to share certain things, to to dwell on certain things, right? Maybe somebody in the congregation needs to hear that. Somebody in the church needs to hear that, right? And you begin to maybe you're saying you know certain other points that you didn't intend to say, but God is actually you. You feel the peace of God. You feel prompted. Um, to say that, right? It's fine. And because you said that, maybe you left out a few things that you had planned to say. That's absolutely okay, right? Still, 
you know, God's plan and God's intention for that particular day is being fulfilled. Right? You're being faithful enough to that. So that's fine. Right? Okay. Okay, I guess we'll stop here because uh, I think the next thing is about uh, do we find preaching in the Bible? Do we see uh, what is the kind of homiletics, you know, that we see in the Bible? So we'll look at that in our next class, right? Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet again. Right?